If you've spent any time at all on our website, social media, or even in a room with us, you've almost definitely picked up on the fact that we value brands building their relationships with their customers. We're all about it. We refuse to stop bringing it up. One of the core ways that this can be achieved is through the use of nurturing automations or sequences that can help educate people on their problems. Most people call this process lead nurturing, as it's the process of providing nourishment to a lead, encouraging them to sprout into a customer. And by doing this, we've won over our leads and delighted customers. Want to do the same? Well, watch on as we break down the six things that create a good lead nurturing sequence. Hi guys, it's Liv here from Neighbourhood, where we help brands find, sell and keep their people. To understand what lead nurturing is, you've got to look at inbound marketing. Inbound is all about helping people solve their problems. It doesn't necessarily just mean giving someone the answer. That approach doesn't encourage a long-term relationship, just a transaction. Instead, educating your leads and helping them work this out for themselves is a much better way to set yourself up for success. By feeding an interested lead content, you prove that you know what you're talking about, you help solve their problems, and you show them that if they have questions, you have the answer. Load all of this content up into an automated sequence and you've got yourself some lead nurturing. So, what does a good lead nurturing sequence look like? Excellent question. Let's start with what bad lead nurturing looks like. I know for a fact that everyone has suffered poor lead nurturing at some point. You've received multiple emails from a business that aren't particularly particularly relevant to you or your problems and aren't even that particularly helpful. They come thick and fast to the point of being just obnoxious. You don't feel particularly connected to the company, you don't think of them as an authority and you haven't had your problem solved. These are all mistakes made by marketers who don't take lead nurturing as seriously as they should. If you want to create a nurturing sequence that drives conversions and creates invested, happy customers, then here are six guidelines we at Neighbourhood follow when setting up sequences. First of all, get the timing right. No one likes to receive emails every day from a company they're still only considering. It's a bit clingy and comes across as desperate. Likewise, leaving weeks or months between emails gives the leads far too much time to move on to another brand and completely forget about you. Aim to space out your emails so they land seven to 14 days apart. Next up, ensure the content is relevant. The only thing worse than drowning in emails is drowning in emails that aren't in any way relevant to you. Your lead gave you their information in turn for something that interested them. So nurture them by offering them more of the same. Build their knowledge base on that topic. Also, offer some variety in your content. You might write fantastic articles, but eventually people will tire of reading them. Change things up through the nurturing process by giving people different offerings, different methods of consuming information. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe and leave a like. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all of our latest videos delivered every week to your inbox. Also, personalize the heck out of your nurturing. The point of these sequences is to build a relationship without having to devote the time required to do so manually. As such, little extras like personalization tokens where possible, ensuring the email comes from a person and not the business, and referencing information relevant to what the lead is interested in will go a long way. Ideally, the lead should think that these emails are being sent individually. Also, remember the goal of the sequence is conversion. It's really easy to forget what you're working towards sometimes with a long-term sequence, but every piece of content and every email should be an attempt to get the lead to convert to the next stage of your funnel. Once they do, be sure to remove them from your sequence too, so you don't keep trying to get them to do something they've already done. Also, give the lead a way out of the sequence in each email. Likewise, some leads don't need a big, fancy, month-long sequence in order to convert. You've won them over in just two or three emails. If that's the case, you want to make sure they have the ability to convert while they're in the mood. So ensure every email has a link that lets them skip the rest of the emails by taking them straight to the conversion. You'll get a customer all the quicker and they don't have to sit through a bunch of emails telling them what they might already know. If you follow everything I said in this video, you'll be building lead nurturing sequence that create more leads than you even know what to do with in no time at all. So if you found this video helpful, feel free to share it with someone you know that needs to handle their lead nurturing sequences. You can also subscribe to our blog where you'll find heaps more tools, tips and templates to help you find, sell, and keep your people just like Neighborhood does. And that's it from me, guys. Happy marketing.